So we're going to start by creating joints. Uh, when we select the joint icon, you'll see here it gives us nice tooltip information. If you need more detail, you can actually click on the help video. And that'll take you straight to the startup videos that you saw at the beginning. So in this case, this is a little example to show how we go about creating joints and joint primitives. So you just click on play there and it will go through and give you instructions on how to create a joint. And so you can see there's similar things for other creation steps as well. Flex bodies, contacts, and so on. Uh, in this instance, I'm not going to worry about the help. I'm just going to show you, take you through the interface. When we create objects, we've provided with a, a selection tool to define the, the class of object, the method. So here, for example, for joints, we can either use two bodies, one location, which basically then assumes the parts are assembled. Uh, we can use two bodies, two locations. So if the parts are not in an assembled state and you need to bring them together, that's what you would use. And then interfaces. So using two interface points to uh, define a joint. Now, because an interface point, as I mentioned, is a marker associated with geometry, it has location and orientation. So when you pick those two interface points, it automatically defines the two, the I and J points uh, for the joint. Um, so let's go through and do this for fixing this housing to ground. You'll notice when I move over the screen, it gives us a preview of the uh, joint uh, and the location and orientation. We can control uh, the pick methods using these filters here in this uh, little toolbar. If you only just want to pick faces, it will filter to faces. So when I pick this lower face here, you can see it's going to put the joint at the midpoint of that face and then align it normal to the face. So we're using uh, the geometry to try and minimize how many picks and clicks we have to go through in defining these objects. You'll notice in the fields, we have the engine block picked and it's also filled in the location orientation field. So the only other thing to do to complete the joint definition is pick the second component. We want that to be ground, uh, and so we can either click on the ground in the tree or simply click on the background like you can at Adam's view to define it to ground. And just like that, our joint is defined. And you can see we have our spider web because we picked that face. It knows that any loads uh, from that fixed joint would be applied to that face on the engine block. Now we're in what we call lightning mode at the minute, which is basically it auto steps through the fields for us. We can turn lightning mode off by just clicking on the uh, little lightning bolt there. And then it allows us to go through and manually click things. For example, uh, for the first part here, actually I want a revolute joint. Uh, I can pick the cylindrical face. You can see it fills everything out aside from the second part, but doesn't move down automatically. To move down, I can either pick here with a mouse or for convenience, wherever you are on the screen, just using the middle mouse button steps you through the fields. So for example, I can pick this face here on part on the engine block for part two. Now it's fully defined. Um, now, normally in lightning mode it would complete, but here it just enables a green checkbox to apply that. Um, we have the ability though instead of clicking on the green check, if we can just continue to use the middle mouse button, it will step down through the field. So we can come in here and override location. Might want to pick that edge or this edge. So we've got a little bit of flexibility. I can even pick these two edges and it will interpolate between them for us. So let's just do that for the fun of it. Uh, and then orientation, again, we can override the orientation with other picks as well. If we're happy with the definition, middle mouse button again, completes the creation. So let's go back into lightning mode just because it's a bit quicker. Now we have um, this explode view, which is convenient when we need to pick uh, faces that are hidden inside assemblies. So we just go to exploded mode and it makes the model uh, a lot easier to go through and pick up items. So in this case, I just want to pick this inner hole here and the hole here on the, con on the crankshaft. And it creates the joint um, the one limitation in the first release is it doesn't support the exploded mode with how it connects the parts together. Uh, but you'll see when we reassemble it, it's all fine. Uh, I'm going to add an inline J prim, so I'm going to put it 
on this uh, top of the conrod here and use this hole on the cylinder. And then we'll use a translational joint between the piston and the housing engine block. And if we collapse uh, the exploded view, view again, you'll see everything looks correct. And so now we just need to apply some sort of motion to make it move. So I'm going to use a rotational motion uh, and we'll do 360. And I think I need to do minus 360 because I want it to go clockwise. So actually I need to make that positive. There we go. You can see if I go over different joints, it doesn't always give me the option to snap and that's because it knows the type of joint we're selecting. So it's only going to let me pick the appropriate joint that the motion supports. So with that click, it then assigns that motion. And you will have noticed now that the tree is starting to fill out with all these entities that we've defined. We can either double click here on the tree or on the screen to edit them at any point. 